Hello and welcome to another Top 5 here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I am Brandy. And I'm Alan. Today we are going to do our Top 5 Character Actors. And yes. we'll tackle, tackle the actresses next week. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a list that was both easy and hard to compile because mm-hmm. there's just so many possibilities. Even after we decided to limit it to only people who are working today in yeah. 2012 and not even deal with the golden age. Yeah, you would think that, like, yeah, we cut <laughs> off, like, so many that this would be easy, but it turned out to be a lot more difficult than... No, than I mean, just off the top of my head, I can think of 20 people who are just, like, yeah, doing the kind absolutely. of work where, you know, I, I classify a character actor as being kind of, like, someone who's really solid in those supporting roles and kind of shows up and does these quirky things, and, you know, you don't necessarily you maybe ever see them as the star, as, like, above-the-headline person, but right. you look at their IMDb page and they've done a hundred things in the past 10 years and they're just like, you're usually pleased to see them when yeah. they show up in something. I mean, character actor, quote unquote, is such like a, it's a term that could be defined in so many different ways. And mm-hmm. I think we, we got it down um, for, <laughs> yeah. for this list. You know, so. yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm interested in what the definition of it even is. So, yeah. you know, okay. all right. Okay, so my number five, um, an actor who's done a lot of TV and um, in the movies is probably best known for being the voice of Chucky, Brad Dourif. Okay. Um, One of his uh, first film roles was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh. Patience. Okay. Um, And my favorite role of his probably is not a movie role or TV role, um, and that is uh, the Doctor on Deadwood. Mm. Who, which is a very bizarre role because he's sort of this just like angry, hunched, mustachioed man <laughs> who. <laughs> As they all were back in the day, right? <laughs> yeah, but he's in like an even. Like, it, he could have been so creepy so easily. And I think, you know, this Brad Dorf is a perfect actor to sort of make him just exasperated and kind of like, why am I living in Deadwood and having to treat all of these prostitutes for VD all day. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like, why is this my life? And he has a lot of compassion for the people around him, but also just kind of is angry at them for who, for the choices that they make. Mm. It's a really, I mean, all the roles on that show are really complex and well acted, but it's one that stood out for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, you know, I'm just always pleased to see him pop up in things. Cool, cool. I think one of the interesting things about character actors is that they're kind of like those, oh, it's that person, you know, where Mm -hmm. you don't really recognize the name, but you recognize the face. The name, I think it could go either way. Yeah, yeah, the name doesn't really ring a bell, but I'm sure I've seen him in something. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah somewhere so mm-hmm. uh moving on to my number five my number five character actor is david warner um now this is a guy who i've seen in a lot of stuff and i can never pin him down he's i was always like i know that dude he's been in he's this been he's been in, in that but he's been in a bunch of horror yeah movies. the dude yeah. has been he, he's been doing his thing for a long time i uh looking at his list uh or his credits he's been working since 1963 the dude's been around <laughs> for a while um like you said some horror films the omen uh waxwork uh which is a, a pretty fun horror film I love um i remember him best as uh billy zane's right hand man in titanic uh <laughs> and the scientist in terminator 2 secret of the ooze um but the thing the 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 project that really uh connects him uh, for me is as the voice of Raz al Ghul in the Batman uh, animated series. Oh. Um, David Warner just has one of those really, really interesting voices um, where once you hear it, you know it's him. And he really made that character one of the most memorable characters in that entire show. Um, every time, you know, I, I see Raz al Ghul, I'm like, yes, it's going to be awesome. And I mean, yeah, that's it. David Warner, do your thing. Great. All right. My number four is another one where I'm kind of um, cheating because I think of them more as a TV actor than a film actor, but I think that's pretty common for character actors in this day and age to go back and forth, back and forth, like wherever the good stuff is. And that is Edward James Olmos, aka um, Captain Adama or Admiral Adama, on the (laughs) whichever, if you want to get technical about it at the end. Um, Uh On Battlestar Galactica, I'm a little bit of a rabid Battlestar fan. I think, you know, Adama is a fascinating character because he does a lot of shit I don't agree with <laughs> but I'm always rooting for him you know and and it's a really tough role um, obviously um, Edward James almost has been um, you know he was on the original Miami Vice for forever mm. back in the day he was in Blade Runner he's, he's been in a million things he was completely underused 
this season on Dexter in mm. just a very silly, silly role. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just like, you don't get Edward James Olmos and give him that. Like, you just don't give him that. Um, but I think, you know, he's he's pretty brilliant, and I would love to see him as the star of a TV show again, because that is one of those those rare things. You know, Battlestar Galactica is definitely an ensemble piece, mm-hmm. but he... He really you stands know, out. Yeah, you know, he's he's the, the head of the gang. He's the first name on the credits, you mm-hmm. know, so it's... Note to self, watch <laughs> Battlestar Ugh, Galactica. You're terrible. I'm trying to catch up with TV shows, and that one's on my list for sure. I know. So. I, can't, I can't say anything because I've never watched Breaking Bad. So. Oh, okay. All right, moving on to my number four. Uh, my number four character actor is an actor who's been around for, you know, a little bit, and um, I just like to see him in bigger roles, and it is Chiwetel Ejiofor. Oh, I love him. Um, yeah. This is a dude that, you know, you know his face, you've seen him around, and, you know, in everything that I've seen him in, he's always done good work. Even in, in films that I really don't like, like She Hate Me and Salt, he oh, what is was not... he doing in Salt? Like, he, he was, was like the FBI goodness. agent that was, like, trying to track down Angelina Jolie and everything. Yeah. Um, it's just, he, yeah, so in, even in bad movies, he's usually the highlight. Um, interesting enough, looking back at his uh, credits, he usually plays like a lot of villains um Mm -hmm. children of men he played the quote-unquote villain in that film serenity he was the main uh villain in that movie i think Um, it has to do with the voice more than anything he just has a good like smooth villain exactly um he just has one of those presences that just attracts attention you know and i just feel like this dude deserves more attention more leading roles um so yeah, and he has one of the coolest names ever too. I mean, yeah. that's a name we want to hear more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so. I love him, and I and I my recent wish is that if they do make this uh, ill-fated new version of Buffy that they're talking about, that mm-hmm. they cast him as Giles, because oh. I think we could use a little color if we're gonna redo it again. Hey, but <laughs> nothing wrong with that. All right, um, my number three actor, uh, very another sort of suave, deep voice guy, uh, shows up in a lot of great movies, especially I recently watched him when I rewatched Robocop. And Uh-oh. that is Ray Wise. Um, yeah. I love him. I've also recently been watching Twin Peaks for the first time. Mm. And he plays Leland Palmer, father of Laura Palmer, whose murder kicks off the whole show. Mm. He is a little unhinged after her, <laughs> as you would uh, expect to be after losing a child. But I mean, mm-hmm. just, I mean, he goes full out with what David Lynch gives him to do in that show. Mm-hmm. And I just, I think he's such a great actor. And he was on this show called Reaper on, um, mm-hmm. on CW a couple years ago, which I really, really liked. He played the devil and he would always show up. <laughs> Awesome. Always show up in a suit being like messing with everyone and chuckling, just like the absolute perfect suave devil character. And mm-hmm. I was really, really sad when that show got canceled because I thought it was hilarious and creative and there was less rewise in my life after that. So. Note to self, <laughs> watch Twin Peaks. No, but uh, honestly, like Ray Ray Weiss, he's one of those dudes that like, when you think of a list like this, his name like almost comes up like all the time. Mm-hmm. Like he was this close to, to being on my list. And if we were to do this again, he, he would definitely yeah, be there's, on there. There's so. tons of options. So moving on to my number three, uh, my number three character actor is one of those dudes where every time I see him, I, I know he's going to give us a good performance. It is James Cromwell. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, the dude, he's just one of those guys that's like, he, he can never do wrong in, in, in my eyes. Um, I mean, he was. Hoggett, you know how I feel about Exactly, that. I was about to say, he was nominated <laughs> for an Oscar for Babe. He was in LA Confidential, um, playing one of the key roles in that film. Um, played, had a very good uh, performance in The Green Mile, uh, The Queen. He was on television with 24. Um, most recently, he was the uh, lovable butler in The Artist. Um, there's not really much I can say about James Cromwell where I feel like, it almost feels like a broken record to me because it seems like this dude, like, I can't say anything bad about him, you know? No, he's great. He's, yeah. He's great. And it's a great segue because my next <laughs> actor was also in The Artist, and uh-huh. that is John Goodman. Oh, yes. Um, Damn, I love John Goodman. I get so excited when he's in stuff. When he showed up on Community, I was like, yes, this is yeah. going to be the best. Um, he was on Damages last year, playing this very creepy, like, uh, private weapons maker or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very different from some of the more lovable uh, roles that I've seen him in. And uh, probably I will just love him forever, even if he never does anything else, mm-hmm. for being 
the voice of Pacha in the Emperor's New Groove, which, as you all know, <laughs> I think is the funniest movie ever made. Yeah. Um, plus all of his work in all the Coen Brothers movies, and plus Roseanne. Roseanne, like, come on, yeah. You know, uh, everything this guy touches, I love him in. Frankly, mm-hmm. I don't. I can't think of a, something I've seen him in where I was like. You know, that was a waste. What were you doing there, John Goodman? Yeah, I mean, that's like a sentence that doesn't, like, exist. You know, I mean, that guy is just completely watchable, totally charismatic, uh, lovable in everything he does. I mean, going all the way back to, like, arachnophobia, the dude was just awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, he's just a guy who's just, I don't know, he's like one of those dudes that it's like, you want something good, go to John Goodman. Yeah, I think he's phenomenal. Yeah, he's great. Um, okay, moving on to my number two. Uh, my number two character actor is Ian Holm. Oh. Uh, now, for me, this guy, every time I see him in a film, he always kind of plays like a dude who knows what's going on. He always plays like the intelligent character. Um, I, just everything he's done, Brazil, Another Woman, uh, Big Night, The Fifth Element, The Sweet Hereafter, The Lord of the Rings, I mean, everything, you, you just keep, the list goes on and on, the guy has a quality career, um, and... He's very good at being thing, serious. The thing about him is that he will always be in my mind as being in one of the most scariest moments mm-hmm. in movies, when his character of Ash in Alien gets his head knocked off, and, <laughs> and it's and it's revealed that he's a robot, really and that whole gross. that whole conversation when his head is on the table and milk is coming out his mouth, and it's like <laughs> you have my sympathy. It's like oh, I God, swear dude. I think the like neck milk is grosser than the face hugger. Like it's so gross. Yeah, I mean the marbles like all over the place. It's like it's when so I think of Ian Holm, I think of that image. I don't know what Never that says, but tapioca pudding again. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So. All right. Um, my number one, um, a very recognizable actor, I think, even if you're someone who doesn't know his name, and that is Wallace Shawn. <laughs> um, Inconceivable. Zini in The Princess Bride, which is, you know, one of the best movies ever, one of the funniest roles ever, yeah. you know, <laughs> probably the greatest death scene in movies, just like the laughing and the <laughs> yeah. falling over. Um, but he's been in a ton of other great stuff, too. Obviously, his very first screen role was in one of your favorite movies, Manhattan. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that scene, I laugh all the time because it's built <laughs> like, up this where... this is Jeremiah. <laughs> this is the guy who, like, opens you up sexually and taught you everything you know. And then he just comes in, hey, how's it like, going? turtleneck or whatever. Right? Yeah, <laughs> oh, so. It's so good. Um, you know, I love him in Clueless as the Mr. Hall, the teacher that gets set up. You know, I, uh, the voice of the dinosaur in the Toy Story film. Oh, yeah. Uh, and now he's on Gossip Girl playing Blair's stepdad and constantly <laughs> just stealing scenes, you know. He pops up in the weirdest stuff, and he is wonderful everywhere, and I just, I get so excited every time he's in something. Oh, so. he's he's great. I mean, one of those instant, instantly recognizable faces. Uh, Definitely voice, instantly recognizable obviously, voice, yeah. yeah. Um, he was great in My Dinner with Andre. Obviously, yes. he's playing one of the two leads in that film. Uh, he's awesome. Well, Wallace Shawn, yeah, he's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of great, my number one character <laughs> actor is an actor. When when you think of actors that are like, oh, it's that guy. I've seen him before, but I don't know his name. To me, Richard Jenkins is the mm. number one guy. This dude. I, I mean, if you watch movies, you've seen Richard Jenkins oh, yeah. in something. I mean, from his comedies to his dramas. Uh, the guy was uh, nominated for an Oscar in The Visitor. The Visitor is amazing. Um, he was really good in Let Me In, the remake. Um, I mean, like I said, with all of these other actors, they're so good at, like, portraying and becoming a character, and Richard Jenkins just completely does it every single time. Um, He's such a sleeper funny guy, too. Like, you think he's going to be this, like, always just the sort of silent whatever mm -hmm. guy, and then he'll do something like Burn After Reading, where, like... I, I don't know, like, he, his He's character like, is, like, tragically funny, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. It's just, I don't know, It's he has that kind of look where it's, like, he can draw, like, a lot of sympathy, but at the same time, he can use that sympathy and twist it to make it funny. Richard Jenkins, he's he's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, this was our five great actors that we just kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because there's tons more where those came from. We'd love to see your top five list for Absolutely. contemporary They're... character actors. Yes. You can uh, find, you can tell us that at mcguffinpodcast.com. Find other top fives. And stay tuned next week for top five character actresses. <laughs> <laughs>